the number one motivational speaker under 40 in the world. He's got one billion views. <laughs> Are, of how generous you are, of how ambitious you are, of how caring you are, and you mark yourself out about out of ten. And anything that I was below an eight out of, I had to step up into because you are a magnet to what you attract in your life. Whether it's a partner, whether it's a career, whether it's anything in your life, you are literally a magnetic force towards what you attract. So if you want a ten out of ten partner and you keep attracting jerks into your life, or whatever you want to call them, then that's probably because inside of you you're storing limitations and limiting beliefs, which Vishen's beautiful sixth phase meditation will help you get rid of. But you're storing those inside of you you need to get rid of, and you think you're a 10 out of 10, but you're behaving at like a four, so you keep attracting fours. So I had to mark up, I had to be like, oh my god, I'm really, I'm low on some of these scores, I'm like, I'm a two on this one, and I, I, I'm at a five on this, is horrendous. No wonder I haven't had my dream partner show up. I had to become a 10. I had to love who I was and really step into it. So I was the most generous person. I was giving everywhere for the next three weeks. I was being so loving. I was just being love and emulating love. And that was step two. Beautiful. All right, now let's go on to step three. Uh -huh. The table. She says as she drinks, I actually was going to bring my tea on stage, but we couldn't find my hot water. So, here's what happened next. I was walking past this beautiful store in London. Okay. I used to live in London, you might be able to tell by the accent. And I was a beautiful tea store. And then I saw it, I was in Paris, and it was the same thing. There's only two places where they sell this tea. You know, traditionally at the time. And, and I'm walking around, and then I realized the name of this tea is... Uh, I, by the way, I'm not endorsed by this brand, but I'm just going to say it. I'm, genuinely have nothing to do with the affiliation of it, but I'm just going to say it. It's called mariage in French, and if anyone who speaks French, it means marriage. Okay, so I was like, oh my god, marriage. Like, that's that's what I want in my life. I want to attract marriage. Well, maybe if I go and smell these tea, and by the way, the number right now on this phone is 111, so it's telling us we're in a time right now. I'm just looking down and seeing I don't understand this timer. So, Laura is just saying 111. What does that mean? It's supposed to be counting backwards, so we know when to get off the stage. I love it, but it tells me that someone's going to be their soulmate. Very soon. Tell me somebody in here is going to go, Natasha, you're never going to believe what happened. It's going to be a gym. I'm going to go, tell me now. Oh my god, I love it. So, okay, now I get this tea. And now I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this tea and I'm smelling it. And the smell of it is like no other tea. And I love tea. I mean, I drink tea all over, everywhere I go. But this is something else. And there was a box. And I opened the box. And there's 30. If anyone knows about the power of numbers, three is a very powerful number, and six and nine, Tesla method, etc. If you know that, that's a whole other story. But I knew that 30 tea bags was enough for me to implement some kind of ritual. So as I open this box and I inhale the tea, it blows my mind. And then I start to visualize every time I open this tea box, right? I buy it, I go home. But I, every time I open this tea box, I inhale the smell of this tea and I visualize my dream partner, arms around me, like what it would feel like with him holding me as I'm drinking my tea. You know, just a really nice embrace, a cuddle, okay? I'm a sensual person, so I was like, I just imagine him holding me. What would that feel like to me? And then, 17 seconds I did that. So 17 seconds I'm inhaling the smell of this tea. Then I would drink the tea, and as I'm drinking it, I am literally feeling this partner in my life. I'm imagining just sharing the tea and visualizing strongly what it feels like to be married to him already. You want me to go to the next bit? Okay. So now I'm just like, you're on this for you. So now I'm just like, oh, okay, I really feel it. So I'm like 30 days, you know, I'm becoming this really great person. I'm really changing who I am. I'm actually becoming a magnet to my dream partner. And I get on with my life, I get on with what I'm doing. 21 days later, I go on Clubhouse, and I hear this voice in one of these rooms, which was actually your room, and I'm sitting in there, and I hear, and I've got no baby ball, I'm chilling at home in London, on the other side of the world is that guy, and I hear his voice, and I go, oh, that's him! Like, I just knew! I didn't even know what he looked like. I tap on his name, I go to his page, and I'm like, oh boy, that's a transatlantic move. He lives on the other side of the world, but I know that's him. And I press 
fall out. <laughs> and it follows me back and goes, great timing. I was like, ooh, yes. But actually, it wasn't, it wasn't romantic what he was doing. He, he's a PR guy, right? So he's a PR pub. So he said to me, we're doing an article in Forbes at the moment, and uh, you, great timing, you just followed me. Do you want to be listed as one of the top top five coaches? We've seen your work and we love it. I was like, yeah, whatever. I was like, sure, like, you know, compliment. But I was really wanting him to say, you're amazing. I love your voice or something, you know, that would like hit my heart. You didn't. But <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> that was how we met. That was the, the tea manifestation. It really was. And I do it with many things, by the way. I don't just do it So when you mentioned something else, you mentioned that even before you brought this person into your life, you were preparing for this person. Yes. You were living that essence. You had created a custom perfume for this person. Michael, did you actually get the perfume? He's wearing it right now. Wow. Come smell me. So did you just say that? <laughs> so, we wanted, so now I guess if we want to know the scent that you like, we I'll should just go sniff Michael. Get That's it. awesome. Okay, so you started creating all of these things to prepare for this soul to enter your life. You created a custom perfume. What else did you create? Well, I created a whole alignment of me, so I decided what I was going to wear with this person. I knew I had to change my brand because at the time, I mean, it was, I was a bit of a mess of what I was dressing in. I didn't quite, you know, one day I'd have these beautiful long braids with a little Harajuku Japanese dress on, and I don't know, I had like eight cultures going on at once, and like, it was just a lot, so I had to like define who I was. And so I started evolving, dyed my hair back to this natural color, and just started embracing who I was. And I started putting out outfits that I was going to wear with him. I created a space in my bed where I was going to sleep. I created um, a space upstairs on my table with me and my son. I had a third place met out at dinner. My son was like, who's that for, mommy? I'd be like, Hilarious. I love the way you tell that story. But there's actually so much wisdom in there. Okay, so let's talk about the tea thing. I think that is a really good practice. I drink tea on a daily basis, but I've never bothered to sit. I normally pour my cup of tea and I get straight to email, but I've never bothered to actually sit down, smell the tea, and use that to trigger the memory of something that you want to manifest. I think that's a really powerful tool because one of the things you guys just learned when, as you wrote down your perfect day and your manifesto, you want to bring that to mind as often as possible and tying it to pouring and sniffing that first cup of tea or coffee is useful. Now interestingly, you said you would think about it as you drank the tea. Well, Jose Silva did some research and uh, he called it the glass of water technique. And he said that when you're drinking any substance and swallowing, Right, so he would, he would do it with the glass of water. You are triggering alpha waves in your brain, and those alpha waves are a really great way to program your brain. So there is something to thinking about intention as you are sipping something. That's a great idea. And that was there was something interesting as well that I would do. I don't want to forget this part: the actual writing down of the story. So I do this not only with love fish. I do this with like anything I want to achieve. So I bought a journal just after we met. So bear in mind we're in a different country. We spoke for two months online and then he flew in to see me in the middle of COVID. God knows how he got through the borders, but he did. And he arrived and when he got there, it was it was so immediate. You know, we were married within three months of knowing each other. It was so powerful. And we've been married now a year and a half. And where you know we basically know each other at the same time. And so what I did was I bought a journal and I bought one for him and we called it the Once Upon a Time Journal. And I sent one to him and one I had myself. And I wrote in that journal my story in the third person past tense. I'll say it again. I wrote it in the third person and the past tense. I can see you're writing it down, that's so good. Write it down because it's so useful what I'm about to share. So what you do is you write about yourself as though it's a fairy tale, a story, as though it has already happened. So I would write, Natasha met the love of her life and they got married within six months of meeting, it happened within three, and they moved to LA where they lived in their dream home and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I wrote out this beautiful story. Natasha reached millions of people with her work, changing lives. I would always write it down. And 
it's so incredible just to go back and read the story because my brain at the time, when I was writing it down, it didn't know whether it was a memory or whether it hadn't yet happened because it's the same part of the brain. You're creating the neural pathways in the brain. You're strengthening the synaptic connections in your brain. I geek out on neuroscience all the time. It's a real passion topic of mine. And so we understand that when we put pen to paper physically, and we journal, we literally activate in our brains, the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that helps you bring the goal to fruition faster simply because you wrote it down. It's amazing, right? So write it down, the power of putting pen to paper, of physically writing down what you want as though it has already happened. But I would play music when I wrote it down, so I'd be like, I fell in love with this amazing person. I would play the music. I would just enjoy it. So as I'm writing it down, it's coming to life. And I'm, I'm not just writing it in a bad mood. I would wait until I was really in a good place that day, even if it was only for a split second. But I would hold on to that little glimmer of light for one second, and I would lean into it and believe it. And as I'm writing it, it feels so real. And then your dreams suddenly are in your reality and you created it just from believing it, writing it down, and taking action. Wow. <laughs> the concept of writing it down is very powerful. Absolutely powerful. I love the unique spin that you described there. Life book, of course, is also about writing things down. And remember, your manifesto that we spoke about, you want to write that down. There was something else you said that was really interesting. Clearing space in your home, adding that extra cushion, clearing space in your closet. If you guys have done Catherine Woodward Thomas's Calling in the One program on Mind Valley, it's a remarkable program. It's a 49-day approach to manifest your soul name. And she suggested something similar. In one of the practices of that program, you basically make space in your, in your bedroom. You keep space and you create space in your closet. You might um, add a phone charger on the other side of the bed for someone who might be sleeping on the other side of the bed. Marie Diamond talks about this in her feng shui program as well. Don't, if you want to call in a partner, don't have your bed all the way against the wall. Right? Create an environment where it almost as if your room is already set up for that love that you want to create. And you can also go Natasha on it and create customizable perfume for this person to give it to them when they come. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, it's uh, creating space. You know, when you create that space, you create a void and then you're going to refill that void with something. And hopefully with the right things, because what we ingest becomes us. What we listen to, what podcasts we listen to, what books we read literally shape who we are. Everything around us, what we are ingesting, what we're watching on TV. Oh, I watched Christmas movies um, after Christmas that were love related. That's what helped me as well on my journey before I started the process of the manifestation of my love. Because I was watching Christmas films where like the romantic prince saves the princess. And me and my son had such a great time. But it's so romantic. They're the most romantic movies, Christmas films. So you start to feel the love between the people in the movies, and all of a sudden you feel like you're that love, and you are attracting it to you because you're watching things. You're again strengthening the neural pathways in your brain, saying, I can have love too, like that. If they can have it, I can do it. So you transform any negative energy, any jealousy, any feelings of envy into inspiration. You just believe it because you can see it in front of you, so you surround yourself with other couples who are in love. You surround yourself, if you want to have a really successful business, for example, you surround yourself with five people whose average is higher than yours. It raises your average. You, you go around couples who are already in love, speaking about love, watch movies about love, read books that are going to educate you and take you to the next level, rather than watching a trash TV or something that doesn't serve you. Just Beautiful. And, and these same principles apply not just to manifesting a soulmate, but to manifesting just about everything. Hello, friend! 
I'm so excited that you're here. Welcome. If you haven't yet got your copy of the book, it is out now. Make sure you order it from one of your favorite retailers below. It's in any of your local bookstores, no doubt. So grab it from the bookstore in person or hit the link below. And when you get your receipt number, come back here and go to step two, which is where you just insert your receipt number and then boom, step three, you get access to your free gifts, which means number one, you get access to the lifetime course of Be It Until You Become It. You get all the modules, all four modules, including the MBS method as a bonus module on number two as a gift from me to you. And that will be for lifetime. That's for you to keep. And then number two, you get access to the workbook, which we spent months writing. As I was writing the book, as I was creating things, I created exercises which are gonna help bridge the gap between the life that you're living now and the life that you wanna lead. This workbook is phenomenal phenomenal and it goes so beautifully alongside the book. It helps you to really transform and step into that version of you that you are born to be. And then gift three is winning the chance of potentially having a one-on-one -on -one session with me worth over $10,000. So if you want a chance to do any of those things, well, you definitely get the first two, but number three, you may win. So when you buy the book today, put the receipt number in, you'll get access to the lifetime, be it until you become it course, and you will also get the workbook and the chance to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Hit the link now and I'll see you soon. And can I actually call up Michael? Can we get Michael a, a, a mic? Because Michael has such a crazy process of manifesting as well. He became the youngest person in the world to visit all the countries of the world. And I'd love for you to share in like five minutes how you pulled that off. Now, hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, Michael, come on stage. Can we get how's a share up? How's my wife doing? Now, we're going to do better than that. How's my wife doing? Come on. Let's, let's quickly do this, Michael, before you start. Could somebody please pull up a chair for Michael? That'll be fantastic. And our timer is broken, so we do not know how much time we have. So, so uh, Ola, would you just come and whisper in my ear? And then Jason Goldberg, I'm going to ask you to come on stage and just pull us off when time runs out, okay? Yeah, guys, I'll, look, I'll be really quick, but I just wanted to share, as we shared this last night during dinner, when I was 23 years old, I wanted to be the youngest person to go out of every country in the world. I wanted to do it because I believed people were good everywhere, and I saw it when I traveled. Hands up, those who have traveled, and you see beauty in every country, and in every con eye contact you make, you see yourself. And and I saw the media saying, you know, you can't go to Afghanistan, you can't go to Pakistan, you can't go to Syria, they're at war. And I said that I don't think that's true. And I'm willing to risk my life to prove it. And who's read Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich? Right? The first chapter talks about the, um, these soldiers going to war. And they set, they burn the ships behind them. And they, the, the soldiers said to the commander, why are you doing this? And the commander said, either we die on this beach, or we win the war. There's no option, there is no plan B. You either do it or you cease to exist. And that was powerful for me. So on, my, on the last day of my trip I said, either I'm gonna to go to every country in the world and be the youngest person to do it, to prove people are good everywhere, or I'm gonna die trying. Either I do it or I cease to exist. Those are my options. And it was a Facebook post. And what happened? I stood up on this pedestal, which was my Facebook page at the time, and I made this proclamation. And what happened? Everyone laughed. My friends thought I had literally lost my mind. My parents asked if I was okay. And I didn't have that support. I didn't have the funds to do it. I didn't have the network. I had nothing, right? But I had this vision to do it. And so I needed someone or something to believe in me. And so what did I do? I went to the press. I started emailing every publication, every contributor, and all these big publications. And there was one man named Adam Siddick from Huffington Post who said, this is a great story. He interviewed me and he did a publication saying Michael Graziano to be the youngest person going to every country in the world graduating with his global degree. The idea of the, the show is called Global Degree. Uh, with the idea you have to visit every country to graduate. 
And once the press believed in me, then I got all this, I went to the, number, the top companies in the world, I went to TripAdvisor, I went to Discovery Channel, I went to GoPro saying, look, it's, I'm in the press, here I am. Will you buy into this vision? And they said, sure, let's do it. And I got all this funding from all these companies and I promised them the world, literally. I promised them the world. You know, there's only one problem. I'm not a videographer. I'm not a photographer. I knew nothing about creating a film. So what did I do? I hired a team. I found the people to come on the trip to produce all the content for the, for the sponsors. So then, three months after my Facebook post, I was on this trip to go to every country in the world. And so it's what I call the self-fulfilling prophecy. Who's heard of self-fulfilling prophecy? It's very simple. It's your beliefs dictate your actions. Your actions dictate other people's beliefs about you. Their beliefs dictate their actions towards you. And their actions toward you change your own beliefs. So it's this, this feedback loop, this self-fulfilling thing. No one believed in me, but I got the press, I used the press as a tool to believe in me. And next thing you know, we got on Discovery Channel. We are our page had over a million people tuned in, 75 million views. We were, we had, it was a three million dollar trip in funding from all these companies and sponsors. I brought a woman along with me who became the first woman in history, recorded history, to go to every country in the world. And so this became this big thing. And it's this self-fulfilling prophecy. Who's heard of the, the saying, fake it till you make it? Right? Yeah. We all know that saying, but I don't like the saying. But if you dig deeper, there's something deeper in that saying. Fake it till you make it. I don't want to fake anything. I don't want to fake anything about who I am. My wife came up with the saying, be it until you become it. That resonates with me. I don't want to fake something. I want to be somebody today until I become that person tomorrow. Right? Vision said it best. The universe is not what you want. It's who you are. So let me ask you this. Life is a performance. You get to choose your character and you get to write your script. These ideas of who you think you are, you need to let go of them. They're just thoughts. And memories are just inaccurate thoughts. If you don't believe me, go to a crime scene, you'll get 10 different testimonies of what happened, each one's different, right? So let go of those. Rewrite your script today on who you want to become. And you get to write your, you get to choose your character, you get to write your script. Thank you. Here. Am I doing the exercise? Yes, we still have time to do the exercise. My, my closing words would be this, the candle effect. I call it the candle effect, right? I think everyone can do this today. I think everyone can practice this today. It's the smallest thing, but it's so powerful. So every day we get a choice of whether we're going to light somebody's candle or whether we're going to blow it out. And if you choose to light somebody's candle, that could be just smiling at somebody next to you giving them a high five, doing a kind deed, a nice gesture. They will go home to their partner or their friend or their colleague and light their candle. And then they will go and light their other friend's candle. And then they will go and light their spouse's candle and so on and so forth. And you have lit up the entire world just from doing one kind thing today. The same way you have the choice. If you're going to speak badly to a waitress, if you're gonna just look a little bit, you know, rudely at somebody next to you, if you're not gonna make an effort with somebody, you're gonna send the wrong energy to them, you're just gonna be a little bit off to somebody, you're gonna blow their candle out. Or maybe you're gonna take your bad mood out on some argument that you had on somebody else, blow out their candle, they're gonna go and blow out their spouse's candle, and so on and so on and so on, until you delight the whole world. And all that energy is coming back to you, so you wonder why certain people like myself, like Vishnu, like Regan Hillier, like many of the Mind Valley coaches and authors are able to manifest a life of their dreams and are constantly living abundantly, flowing with the force of energy that is for them rather than against them. Why is that? Because they are lighting candles every single day. 
They are going out there and doing things every single day. When I wake up, the first thing I look at is, tell me what is my assignment for today? What can I do today that is going to change the life of one person today? I want to help just one person. And so if you take anything from right now, in this moment, light just one candle. Turn to the person next to you and give them a smile or a high five. Light their candle.
look at those children in that charity. And I want you to look at those people in that charity that you could have supported if you made that money that you needed to, to build those resources that you needed to get to where you needed to be. And look around and commit to them. And I want you to say to that person right now over the road, look at them, those people, and say, I'm going to do this for you. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. Look at them and commit. Commit to yourself and to them right now and just say, I'm going to do this for you. And own it. And feel it. And bring that vision to life one more time. Knowing now you can do it. And you're going to feel it through every cell in your body until it becomes you. Allow it to become who you were born to be because today is the first day of the rest of your life. That's why you're here, because you're ready to take action, because you're gonna commit and you're gonna change your life for the better, not just for you, but you're gonna leave a legacy there after you're gone so that people benefit, so that other people can benefit from your product or your service, from the gift that you were born with because every one of us was born with a gift, a gift of being able to impact other people's lives for the better. It is just up to you to find it today and own it. Are you going to own it or are you going to allow the rest of the world to tear it down away from you? And yes, this is emotional, but that is you getting through to your soul right now. You are reaching the core of your soul because you were born to be greater. You can be it until you become it. Today is your moment. eyes and you are going to roar so loud on the count of three. And when you roar, you're going to send that roar out across all the universe to say, this is my message and I want you to hear it and I'm going to commit. Are you ready? One, two, three. Just throw your hand. 